As we continue our final shows before the end of this strange year. No too verbose. Steadily working toward our final shows of 2020, we... Oh, no, no. This is the new format going forward. Less stories, less news, just less. Jonathan, are... are you okay? Bruce. Yes, I am... fine. Are you sure? Last week's message seemed... somewhat out of character. What was... You need not worry about me. The end is nigh for the... Jonathan, I'm no psychologist, but you appear to be having an existential crisis. Don't be so dramatic. This wouldn't happen to be about Scarlet, would it? No. And yes, I just... If it helps, I don't like her at all. Bruce, let's not be rude. I may not be the biggest fan of her methods, but I think she genuinely wants this show to succeed, though her reasons may be a bit at odds with ours. I'm surprised to hear you defend her. Well, twas me that hired her, so to speak. What? To be fair, I didn't know exactly what I was doing when I signed a contract with her, but how else do you think we have this studio? All of this equipment. It's not as though you or I had the resources. Honestly, I never really thought about it. I know you didn't. But we had to start somewhere. And maybe these changes are for the best. The shorter show, more focused reporting. Our audience has not exactly grown like we had hoped. You're a... You're not wrong. I... I worry with how much you've sacrificed for this and how hard you fought for the soul of this show. And here she comes completely changing it. Maybe it is how it has to be. I just hope the show isn't made worse in an attempt to make it better. I will do my best to not let that happen. Denberg, truly, what is with all of these annoying noises? Scarlet thinks we should incorporate more sound effects into the show, and I told her that I have indeed dabbled in the fine art of Foley. As you were saying, Jonathan. And here is my impression of Jonathan entering the recording booth. We begin this week with the results of the election that ended on Tuesday, November 3rd. After a long, tense week that involved the counting of an historic number of mail-in votes, today we can declare that Joseph R. Biden Jr. will be the 46th President of the United States of America, and Kamala Harris will be the first woman of color elected to the Vice Presidency. There have inevitably been mixed reactions across the nation. Following the announcement of Mr. Biden's win, there were celebrations in the streets of many cities, including singing, dancing, and fireworks. But there were also protests. Current President Donald J. Trump has contested the outcome, saying that the election is far from over. His supporters have made unsubstantiated claims that there was rampant voter fraud. Mr. Trump has already begun litigation to combat the vote. On Saturday evening... Joe Biden and Kamala Harris addressed the nation from a stage in Wilmington, Delaware. They spoke of seeking unity after the divisive election and spoke of aggressive plans to combat coronavirus. President-elect Biden summarized this message best by defining America's next chapter as a time to heal. Jonathan! 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 Bruce? I have something incredibly important to report on. Bruce, we are truly not able to include this. You know Scarlet's mandate that... I don't care. I must tell the world. All right. Fine. I suppose, but you will have to deal with Scarlet. Here is our entertainment reporter with a rather unexpected report. Carry on, Bruce. In news that no one saw coming, streaming service Quibi is shutting down. What is a Quibi? Nothing anymore. Bruce... 
They had planned on making quote-unquote high-quality video content similar to Netflix and Hulu. But these series would be short form, only playable on mobile devices, and required a paid subscription. The initial startup cost for the venture was nearing $2 billion. The shutdown was announced just six months after launch. This sounds like news that everyone should have seen coming. Yes, Jonathan, that, that was the joke. Uh, all right, back to you. Your humor is always appreciated, Bruce. As are the words from our sponsors. Denberg? This week we are not doing that. Not even a semi-humorous faux advertisement. And why might that be? Scarlet has some big things planned and wants to restore the sanctity of our sponsorship space. I'm not entirely sure what that is supposed to mean. Oh, you will know soon enough, Jonathan. I'm growing somewhat tired of hearing that. If it helps, I have some strangely true local news stories for you. You know what, Denberg? If I'm being quite honest, I'd like to have Archie's help with that instead. But... but Jonathan... Archie? Archie? Hello! Do you have some odd stories for us? Yes, sir. Do I ever! And you know, because of the power outage last week, we were not able to do our tag team report on voter suppression. Tag team report? Really? As I was saying, Archie... Why don't you read the strangely true local news? Oh, come on! Yes. Thank you, Mr. McNally. We begin with the theft of a log splitter in Marlow, Tennessee. Clues quickly pointed officers to the perpetrator as suspect Hugh Sieber left some tools, a cell phone, and his severed finger at the scene of the crime. The detached digit was quickly returned to its owner at the local hospital. And Mr. Sieber also received a charge of theft. Another foolhardy crime ended quite tragically, as 47-year-old Texas man Camilo Morihon took to the old Facebook Live while behind the wheel of his vehicle. He recorded himself swigging a beer and bragging, I drive better when I drink. Just six minutes later, his vehicle crashed at high speeds into a pickup truck, killing his three passengers. As of the most recent report, Morihan remains in critical condition. I implore you all, please, don't drink and drive. And finally, Florida man Dwight Turner was mauled by a leopard after paying $150 for a full contact experience. The leopard's owner, Michael Poggy, had offered Turner an opportunity to play with it, rub its belly, and take pictures. But Turner was only able to enter the cage and sit on a bench before the leopard growled and bit his head and ear. Poggy has been issued two misdemeanor citations, and the Facebook page for Poggy's Animal House has been deactivated. Oh my. A bit darker than our usual stories for the segment, Archie, but thank you all the same. And now for our main story. While the United States recovers from a strenuous election season we find that this topic is, of course, being well covered all across American news media. So, this week, we have chosen to highlight a struggle happening beyond our borders. While major media outlets have told of the ongoing protests in Nigeria, it has often been overshadowed by the ever-looming political turmoil in the U.S. Thus, in an attempt to highlight something that you may not be fully aware of, today we discuss the NSARS protests, and the impact it is having on West Africa's most populous country. Early in October, a video emerged showing an officer of Nigeria's notorious police unit, Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS, allegedly shooting and killing a young unarmed man in Delta State before driving off. The video spread across the World Wide Web, generating public outcry, beginning a movement under the hashtag EndSARS. The heavily armed police force in question was formed in 1992 to combat violent crime including carjackings and armed robbery, but have become more synonymous with allegations of police brutality. Amnesty International has documented cases that included extortion, rape, and extrajudicial killings. And the NSARS campaign has allowed citizens to voice their personal experiences with the group, telling tales of violence, theft, and intimidation. 
There are also reports that SARS frequently found ways to extort young people who appeared to have disposable income, but were not known to have affiliations to people in power. More and more accounts, photos, and videos surfaced, resulting in nationwide protests that began on October 8th. The protests are the largest seen in a generation, and they have been persistent. The Nigeria police force has met the mostly peaceful demonstrations in some cities with tear gas and water cannons. But the massive protests have not been deterred, with the message transcending religious and economic divisions in Nigeria, many hoping to enact heavy police reforms, even still including higher compensation, but also better training for officers. Further support has come from the nation's sports stars and celebrities around the world, including Beyonce and Rihanna. The feminist coalition, consisting of 14 women, have been integral as a coordinating center for the NSAWS movement. They have raised the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars to support the cause, also helping in delivering medical support and legal assistance for those detained. Additional female leaders have helped raise funds to provide accommodation, transportation, and meals for protesters. And media strategist cum advocate Renu Oduala is currently serving as a member of the Judicial Panel in Lagos, to investigate police brutality. While some feel this will all pave the way to new opportunities for women, many are not as hopeful, as female issues are largely left out of the larger conversation of the protests. Nonetheless, female iconography has been widespread in the movement. One key symbol includes a black female gender symbol with a familiar black fist on the central circle, and another shows activist Aisha Yesufu wearing a traditional hijab standing with her right fist clenched in the air. These symbols are reminiscent of the Black Lives Matter protests in the United States. There are further similarities as protesters chant, Our Lives Matter. Interviews with mothers marching in the protests also sound all too familiar, as they speak about how they want the killing of their children to stop. Unfortunately, these mostly peaceful protests have also seen their violent nights and October 20th was likely the turning point. The Lekki toll gate in Lagos had become a safe haven for protesters, largely free from any violence. That is, until that Tuesday. After security cameras had been removed that afternoon, the electricity was also shut off in the plaza later that night. Young Nigerians continued to sing and wave flags in the dark, but as the demonstrations continued past the statewide curfew, trucks of security forces descended on the toll gate, Live rounds were reportedly used, allegedly killing a dozen and injuring several more. The Nigerian army asserts that they perpetrated no such violence, and that the widely circulated videos of the evening were doctored. President Muhammadu Buhari has stayed mostly silent on the matter, but the often quiet president has finally spoken to condemn segments of the protests, due to increased looting in the recent days. He also attempted to speak to the accomplishments of his administration, as the NSAR's protests have begun to encompass many other issues within the nation. Technically, the initial goal has been accomplished. In mid-October, Nigerian Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Adamu, disbanded SARS. But in all actuality, this is the fourth time that the unit has been dissolved. And once again, in its place, a new unit has come forward, called SWAT, Special Weapons and Tactics Team. Demonstrators are not satisfied with what have been seen as placebo moves that won't change much. They intend to continue protests to end police brutality. They have also begun to address further problems that affect citizens, especially the youth, including corruption, nepotism, and simply more economic opportunities that might lead to meritocracy. There is a general frustration felt by a populace wherein 55% are under or unemployed. These numbers are even worse for the young, and have been greatly exacerbated by the recent oil price crash and the effects of the pandemic felt by all nations. There are many within the protests who feel that the focus should remain solely on police reform, and this has caused rifts within the movement. Meanwhile, divisions within the country are worsening as well. While the focus of much reporting has been on those in the streets, there are those who support SARS and similar forces. In the country's northeast, they have been incredibly effective in fighting a decade-long insurgency against jihadist group Boko Haram. Potentially, from such differing viewpoints, 
violence has erupted, as on October 22nd, there were reports of armed men shooting at protesters in Port Harcourt. These attackers went so far as to break into homes, murdering those inside, and burning the properties. The identities of the shooters are as yet unknown. Tensions continue to rise with each passing week, and as this continues to develop, I would not venture to surmise where this may all lead. There are even whisperings of regime change within certain circles of the nation's populace. How reforms are achieved could greatly affect the lives of nearly 200 million citizens. And for new democracy on track to be the third largest country in the world by 2050, the results of this turmoil will certainly have ramifications across the globe. Here at Yesterday's News Today, we will continue to inform you of the struggle of all those within our country and abroad. But for now, thank you for listening, and good night. This program was written and performed by Roger J. Thatcher and Dennis Schenberg and Diana Riley as the motivational tape. You are encouraged to obtain a subscription to this broadcast with the simple selection of a button below. Furthermore, you can indicate your appreciation by giving us the old thumbs up. Did you have any thoughts about any of our stories? Please comment them below. Or to read those of our newsmen, tune your Twitter to at Radio YNT. And as always, be sure to tune in next week to hear tomorrow's news of yesterday, then. You are more than the opinions of others. I am more than the opinions of others. You must not only dream of success, you must work for it. I must not only, um... Uh, work, um, something, something, success. Look in the mirror. That is your competition. Look in the mirror. That is, I am, um... You uh, must uh, not uh, overestimate the competition and underestimate yourself. I must not overestimate, uh, Archie. I am, I will... Um, Your victory uh, is right around the corner. Never give up. My victory is right around the corner. I will not give up.